think it's important, especially for the new members of the council, that we understand the history of this issue. This is part of a discussion paper on weed control prepared by the then county engineer DJ McDonald. If you turn to the back of this sheet, you will see in the highlighted final section that in September 2006, he asked for authorization for the roads department to again spray herbicide for broadleaf weeds. It was a general request, not, a, not to specific to poison parsnip. Turbo crop was chosen, presumably as it is a license for use against many broadleaf weeds. Now I take you to tab D, the orange one. This is part of the discussion paper a year later, after the 2007 season, when Mr. McDonald recommended the acquisition of equipment so the roads department could manage the mowing themselves in 2008. He stated in the highlighted section that it would be flexible enough to react to demand and conditions, flexible enough to go back and achieve desired results, and flexible enough to go back should conditions change. In fact, it promoted a flexible mowing pro program, not one that begins at one end of the county and ends at the other. The counties acquired the equipment recommended by Mr. McDonald and in 2008 began their own mowing. To date, no, flexible, no flexibility in the mowing has been demonstrated, no attempt to identify where the worst contamination of poison parsley exists and ensure that these areas are mowed at the correct time. Please now look at tab E. This is a presentation made to South Glengarry Council by the new county engineer in August 2009. At the end of the second season, after acquiring the mowing equipment, and the same year that the province's new pesticide act came into force. If you refer to the highlighted section, you will see that the current vegetation management program requires them to chemically treat two-thirds of the rural road system each year because they do not have enough manpower to manage the weeds by mowing alone. This quite clearly, this, this shows quite clearly that even though the counties were claiming to us that this was a health and safety issue, spraying was now an essential part of their vegetation management program. Surely we should expect that the counties should up, live up to that stated aim of flexible mowing when you spend our tax dollars to bring this activity in-house. Let's also be clear that we are not just spraying in those areas where it is difficult for us to access with mowing equipment. This is wholesale spraying of the county road network. Please now turn to tab B. In this section there are five points I should like to make. There's two pages in this. They come from an email exchange between myself and the current county engineer during the last two weeks. Well, I was trying to find out what their budgetary, budgetary plans were for 2011. If you refer to page 3, to the section highlighted 1, you will see that he is initially unable to tell me what is in the budget for spray. However, he does tell me that he has plans to complete some detailed surveys of where the poison parsnip really is. Evidently, in the past four years spraying program, they did not really know where it was. In the item mark two, on page two, he also tells us about his informal tailgate meetings with his staff to educate them on poison parsnip and provide them with safety gear like this and gloves. The funny thing is it does not take anything more than this to educate people about poison parsley. It is very easy to identify. So he places the safety of these people who, whose risk he can so easily mitigate with his chats ahead of the community represented by the collective voice of the medical profession. But remember, he is engaged in a vegetation management program that requires chemicals, even though the province has introduced its new pesticide act and banned the use of non-essential pesticides. The municipal roads organization called Oprah asked them to be exempt from the, from the treatment of their roads, but the province said no. 
You can only use chemicals where you have a health or safety concern. Suddenly the poison passed it and another use. It could be used as the excuse to continue spraying in just the same way as they began in 2007. And there was this health or safety loophole in the legislation that allowed it. Well, I don't doubt that they thought they were killing the parsnip, but they were not conducting this exercise as a last resort, as County Engineer has repeatedly told us. The reason that Mr. Brownell has been forced to introduce Bill 157 is to close this loophole. He has listened to the advice of the medical community, unlike the United Counties who have completely ignored it. Item 3 on page 1 finally reveals the content of the budget. It is 55,000 for chemicals plus 10,000 to find out what the parsnip really is. That's point four. But this item also reveals an interesting fact. No dollars for the institute, even though the county engineer has stated a one season study on a biennial weed cannot give us a complete picture. In item 5, 